Hey YouTube, this Weber grill has been okay. It hasn't been great. We haven't been able to really control very much as far as the uh, quality of the cooking. It was very expensive. It was $500 or $600. But, you know, we really miss a charcoal griller. So we went ahead and got a reasonably priced charcoal griller and we're going to do an unboxing today. Uh, it's super heavy. We used to have a Brinkman model and uh, that that we had that for about 23 years and I'll tell you that was a really nice piece of equipment but it just rusted out in the firebox so couldn't use it anymore. So we're going to go ahead and unbox our new uh, Home Depot char griller. It's a smoker offset and uh, stay tuned. Hey YouTube, uh, this is the smoker that we got from uh, Home Depot and it was uh, $199 for the smoker and then we got the cover um, and a couple other things, you know, some big thing of lighter fluid and some matches and two big bags of uh, charcoal and the whole thing was about $250. So, um, and again, the reason why we are getting another smoker charcoal grill is because we're not really happy with the way the Weber, uh, you know, propane grill cooks. It's just not really controllable. The heat just fluctuates too too broadly. So um, we're re we had a very similar one. It was a Brinkman smoker offset where it has the firebox right here and uh, the main part. But the Brinkman was on the left hand side. And uh, it doesn't matter, I guess, but uh, we, we did over 23 years of smoking and grilling with the Brinkman, and it, it finally just rusted out in the main smoker section on the bottom. Uh, it was just, you know, it, it was very, it was an excellent smoker, and this is, looks like it's very similar and it's cheap, so we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to go ahead and unbox it and uh, assemble it because it's Labor Day 2019 and our uh, son and, uh, and the rest of our family are coming over. So stay tuned. Okay, YouTube, let me just get you the model number and all of that. Let's go to the label. So it's a Smoke and Champ Charcoal Grill and Smoker. Made in China. Ugh. Oh, I have mixed feelings about that. Um, anyway, we won't go there. Okay, so... Dang it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. So we have the uh, owner's manual on top. So, got to read that. Uh, it's like the bottom grill. More packing material. Okay, so here's all the hardware. So everything's separated out. Really nice. Okay, this looks like the shelf. And this looks like it's it's heavy, so it looks like it's the grill. Right. Yep. So 
heavy grill parts. Looks like it's been seasoned because it's got some oil on it. Okay, we've got the, looks like the firebox is right here. It's pretty big. It's as big as the Brinkman that we had. It's not as solid as the Brinkman. It's really thin. So it's a good thing I got the uh, uh, protector, the uh, cover for it, because I think this would rust out pretty quickly. Another box. I like to lay out everything as I assemble it. Looks like wheels and other hardware. So I'll go ahead and lay all this out and uh, we'll start assembly. Okay YouTube, a um, couple of first impressions after getting all the packing off. This is this is a very cheap, very thin gauge smoker compared to the Brinkman that we had. And it, it, it looks like it's covered in Cosmoline. You know what you, whenever you get a vintage firearm, you know, that's been packed away for, you know, like a Russian SKS or a Mosin Nagant and you know, when they pack them away, they, they just slather on this oil-like substance called Cosmoline to prevent rust. And it, this is very, very similar to Cosmoline that this whole thing is covered in. So I'm thinking, you know, I showed my wife, she came out here to look at this, and I told her I wasn't real happy with the mod, this model that she chose you know, in her shopping, but regardless, you know, it's cheap, but it looks like we're going to have to just fire this thing up and burn off all the Cosmoline. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh well. Hey, I had to show you this. This is some uh, warranty information on the... Um, Charcoal, so it, it talks about rust through and burn through. See here it says for the charcoal grill, it's, it's five years from the date of purchase for rust through burn through. Grill hood and bottom. Ash pan, one year date of purchase. So that tells you right there how low quality this is. If it's only going to last five years, again, the Brinkman I had lasted 23 years. It says here, this side faces down, that's the bottom, and this part needs to go outside. Okay, I'm, I've took it from here to here because obviously it wasn't going to work. I wasn't following following the instructions correctly. So let's see how this works. Oh, goodness gracious. This part is not easy. Got to line up the holes.
Make sure this part doesn't fall back down. And bring these up. Whoop. There we go. Yay. Okay, now I gotta assemble the hardware. Like I said, this is really flimsy. You really get what you pay for. I'll wait to tighten these up after I get it assembled. Just in case. Because these are these are still not you know together. They're just kind of just there. So once we get this the the box installed, that'll be good. Now to install the wheel axle. <laughs> Gotta keep these together. Here's the wheel axle. So that's the cotter pin, flat washer, and the wheel. Okay, now I got to put on the grill body without detaching. <laughs> this is so awkward. All right. <sighs> right here. And I got to see which direction. I think it's, yeah, right here. Super flimsy and sticky. Now the firebox. It's got six bolts. Okay, now there's some spacer tubes that go inside. This is going to be interesting. Very interesting. 
how to finagle this. Okay, now I'm putting on the hood. Calls for two hinge pins and two cotter pins. That's a greasy mess. screws in so that's interesting I guess that makes it more stable hopefully And then the cotter pins. Oops, Ugh. fell in the grease. Man, I'm not happy with this. Sorry, folks, but it's so damn flimsy. Okay, now I need to put on the uh, side shelf. I hope this lasts five years. <laughs> I know it's not going to last 20. I hope it doesn't blow away in Hurricane Dorian. Okay, now the smokestack. Okay, now putting in the thermometer. You can see there's a small hole and a larger hole. Uh, there's a wing nut and a flat washer. The small hole, this gets sunk into, and then the thermometer actually goes there. So. There we go. Now I need to do the handle. Basically the same principle. They have some wing nuts and some lock washers. So the lock washers have to go inside as, as well as the wing nuts. So I'm taking the wing nut off. Uh, this is called a bezel. So you got to have that bezel on as it contacts the outside of the hood. Okay, so bezels on all right and then okay the firebox basically the same thing same type of handle so that makes it easy This is when I really respect surgeons because they have so much dexterity. They can do very intricate things with their hand-eye coordination. 
I have terrible hand-eye coordination. Okay, now the side handle. Okay, I had to exit stage right for a second because of that horsefly. Let's hope he doesn't come back. And tighten. Okay, now the drawer latch. Okay, now I've got to put in the damper circle. The damper circle is here. Uh, into the, the ash tray, I guess it is. So I need a flat washer on the outside. I set it, but I didn't do it. Flat washer and then another flat washer on the inside with a hex nut. Hand tight for now. That's probably all it needs. There. Okay, now the drawer handle. All it takes are two hex nuts. Ahead and open it, probably be easier. Okay, now I got to put the grates in. Okay, that's that. Okay. It's pretty easy. Okay, there, there's a warming rack with this, so that's pretty exciting, actually. So, basically, you put two inch bolts in here okay I actually had it upside down so I installed it correctly let's see if it closes yep it's not very sturdy but it's a nice feature Okay, this is a grease cup holder right here, and I think it just installs like that. That'll capture any grease that drips down. Okay, now I gotta put the ash pan in. Okay, these are the ash pan hangers. So the way they work is they hang here and here. And the ash pan kind of just is suspended. And then you can move it up to get the heat closer, I guess, to the to the meat. Gotta have it even. I don't know if I like that. We'll see. 
Okay, the last part is to put the main grill in. Uh, I wanted to point out there's some S hooks there for cooking utensils just to hang those. But the last step is, is to put down the grill. I've already started the last part. These are these are pretty big, you know. Here's the size of my arm. It's they fit in very nicely. And the ash tray is movable. So it's got a warming tray. It's got a huge surface here. A firebox. Nice shelf. Uh, again, it's not as it's not as um, good as my Brinkman that I had, but what can I say? It was it was one hundred and ninety nine dollars. So I'll clean it up and I'll get the cover and show you that. Okay, now I need to tighten up everything. Okay, everything's tight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and season it now. It calls for spraying everything with uh, vegetable oil on these pan. Uh, that's the grates, all the internal surfaces, and start a medium fire, let that burn out. Then I've got to start another fire, let it burn to 250 uh, with another light coat of uh, pan, and then it should be seasoned, it should be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, YouTube, I think that, that pretty much does it. I'm uh, just going to season this, uh, cook off all the unpleasant residues, and um, it's already getting very hot. So let me just let that ash over for a bit. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this all works out. I'm not uh, too impressed by it based on my Brinkman I had before, but let's see how it goes. I mean, the, the price was only $200 for what you see here. Um, so, all right, we'll uh, talk to you later. Signing off.